This on my face is the Apple Vision Pro, and I don't think it's worth 3,500 bucks. So over the last week, I wore the Apple Vision Pro every single day to find out whether this headset could integrate into my workflow, whether it was something I could use for fun, and whether it was worth the $3,500 price point, which I know, I already told you guys, I don't think it is. But that being said, I still think it's a really exciting new piece of tech. There's a lot of features that I didn't know about until I used this headset for a week. I let my barber cut my hair with this headset on. I don't want to go viral for messing the haircut up. Hold on, I got a text. And I actually do think that there are people out there that could justify the price point depending on what they use it for. So this is my honest review of the Apple Vision Pro from a consumer's point of view. And obviously I'm not gonna do this full review wearing the Apple Vision Pro because man, this thing is heavy. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you whether I'm gonna keep the Apple Vision Pro or return it. But first, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. No matter what your relationship status is or even what your thoughts are on Valentine's Day, we can all agree that some things are better together. Peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and chocolate actually as well. Bert and Ernie, if you grew up in Sesame Street, a left shoe and a right shoe. And you know what else is a perfect match? The Old Man and the Three Podcast and my Raycon Everyday Earbuds. I use my Raycon Everyday Earbuds truly every day and they are still the only ones that I love and still the only ones that I need. With their optimized gel tips, they give you the perfect in-ear fit no matter whether you're listening to your favorite podcast on a run, exercising, or just walking around the house. Like any serious love story, your Raycons are here for a good time and a long time. They've got eight hours worth of battery life when you're using them and 32 hours of battery life for standby. And most importantly, you get amazing audio quality at like half the price of other premium audio brands. I wear these things all day and I love some of their features like their earbud tap functions and their noise isolation. And especially when I'm walking around the house or the office, I love awareness mode. And not only do I listen to my favorite podcasts and music on my Raycons, I also edit all of my videos using my Raycons. So make sure to check out Ray Raycon for yourself and go to buyraycon.com slash techfowler for 15% off your order and free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash techfowler for 15% off and free shipping. Buyraycon.com slash techfowler. The Apple Vision Pro is a first of its kind for Apple. It's their first product in the brand new spatial computing category, or as everyone else knows it, the VR and AR category. But Apple will never say that because they don't want you to think of this as a VR headset. They want you to think of it as a spatial computer, which to be fair, does sound better. And I mean, for $3,500, they have to come up with some sort of marketing lingo that makes you want to spend that kind of money on a VR headset, because that's essentially what it is. To be fair though, when you compare the Apple Vision Pro to other VR headsets like the MetaQuest 3, this thing really is in a league of its own. In many ways, this is an Apple laptop strapped on your face, which allows you to do a lot of things that you could never even think of doing on the MetaQuest 3. And of course, it's also got that Apple touch, which means the industrial design and the materials used on this device are all incredible. Now, obviously the price is a major sticking point when it comes to the Apple Vision Pro. This headset starts at $3,500, or as Apple says, $3,499. And for that, you're getting the Apple Vision Pro headset, a second strap of this strap doesn't work for you, a very nice polishing cloth with Apple Vision Pro written on it, which I'm sure if you check the resale market, probably has some resale value, especially when Apple charges as much as they do for the standard polishing cloth. You get this nice goggle shaped glass protector to put over your headset when you're not wearing it, especially if you don't opt to buy the $200 carrying case, which I didn't opt to buy. And of course you get the battery pack, the charger and a USB-C cable. Now the $3,500 model is the base headset. There is a $3,700 model, which comes with 512 gigabytes of storage, which is double what you get in the base model. And then if you're a baller and you wanna have one terabyte of storage on your Apple headset, you could pay $3,900, which after taxes ends up being more like $4,400, which in my opinion is a lot to pay for a set of ski goggles that uh, would break if you went skiing in them. I know I'm making jabs, but realistically, this is not a product that most people should buy. Internally, this headset features a lot of crazy tech. You've got two high resolution forward facing main cameras that act as essentially your eyes. Around the headset, there are six world facing, as they call them, cameras that track your fingers and also the spatial awareness for the headset. And then inside the headset, there's actually four eye tracking cameras. So this thing is covered in cameras. In addition to that, there's also a true depth camera and a LiDAR scanner and a bunch of other tech that I could get into, but I won't because I don't understand what most of it is. Again, this is a consumer facing review. I don't want to give you all the crazy tech specs because most people don't care about that. I just want to tell you guys about what someone who would buy this thing would care about, or at least their general use cases. Because of all the cameras on this thing, you can, however, film some really cool stereoscopic 3D content. Now, of course, because that content's filmed in 3D, it's only really 3D in the Vision Pro headset. And when you transfer it to a computer or a laptop, or as you guys will see in this video, it just looks like a standard video. It is very cool cool to watch your memories back in 3D. Like I mentioned before, the Vision Pro is incredibly powerful. It's essentially a lower end Apple MacBook on your face. It's got an M2 chip and a brand new R1 chip, which is only featured in this headset. And it is surprisingly capable for a lot of different applications. In fact, throughout my testing of this device, I had no slowdowns whatsoever in any application, which might not be the case for everybody, but for me, 
I didn't have any issues. In addition to all the cameras, you've also got speakers on either side of the headset that basically act as earbuds and fire directly into your ears. They also offer spatial audio, which sounds amazing. Essentially, this thing tracks your head movement and places the sound somewhere in space. And whenever you move your head, it sounds like the sound is staying in that same spot. It's pretty incredible. There are other Apple products that do that, but it is nice to have that directly through the headset itself. But we'll get into more detail about the cameras and the sound and all that sort of good stuff later on in the review. Obviously, if you're recording all this content on the headset, there should be a way for you to view it. And that's through the two 4K monitors that face directly into your eyes. And then finally, you've got one giant screen all the way across the front of the device. So that's a general overview of some of the notable tech specs of the Apple Vision Pro. But now let's talk about the form factor of the device and how you use it. So first things first, you cannot use the Apple Vision Pro without the external battery, which in my opinion is kind of frustrating because not only do you have to wear this heavy thing on the front of your face, you also have to carry around this pretty large battery in like a pocket or something like that. The battery connects on the left side of the headset with this plug that locks into place. And no matter what you're doing, the entire time that you're using this headset, you have to be tethered to the battery. Now with a lot of other cheaper and I guess lower end VR headsets, the battery is either included in the front part of the headset or maybe attached to the back strap of the headset to sort of balance out the weight. In this case, because both things are so heavy, I'm assuming that's the reason why they had to keep it separate. The battery, if it was put on the back of the device, would make this thing unbearably heavy to wear on your head. And if it was included in the front of the device, not only would this thing probably overheat, but it also would be so heavy that your neck might not be able to support the weight. So I understand that some compromises had to be made, but it is still kind of a bummer. It also shows that this is absolutely a first generation device and every Apple Vision Pro after this will be better. Now, when it comes to battery life, I got about two hours of battery life while using this for spatial computing or editing videos on my laptop or even watching 3D movies, which is not bad. According to Apple, this battery is slightly smaller than the battery that you get in your iPhone, which is interesting to say the least, especially because it's bigger than my iPhone or at least heavier than my iPhone. I mean, that probably has something to do with the giant aluminum case that it's in, but still. The good news is though, if you want to use this headset more than the allotted like two to two and a half hours, you can actually plug the battery directly into the wall with a USB-C cable and you're good to go. It'll actually power the headset and very slowly charge the battery so you can continue using your headset all day with no issues. Now, while I don't love the battery pack, one thing that I do love about the battery pack is that the design of this thing was actually pretty smart. They put a USB-C port on the same side that the cable comes out of the battery. So when you put this in your pocket, both cables can come out together of the same side rather than having one cable come out of one side and one cable come out of the other side side and make it very difficult to kind of place it in a pocket or on a table or something like that. Very smart. And also probably the only way to do it without pissing people off. When it comes to actually using and interacting with the Apple Vision Pro, Apple did something very different than any other VR headset has done in the past. And that is to not require the use of any kind of external controllers whatsoever. All you have to have is your eyes and your hands. So the way that you move about and interact with the Vision Pro's UI is by looking at the thing that you want to select and then clicking your fingers together to select it. Not only that, when it comes to keyboards and number pads, you can actually physically type with your fingers, which I thought was a pretty cool touch. Now I will say the first time that you use this device, there is definitely a learning curve. And Apple does a really good job of running you through how to do everything when you first power this thing on. The learning curve though does take a couple days to figure out, at least it did for me. But the input method of using your eyes as essentially the mouse cursor and then your fingers as the click is not a bad way to go. And when it comes to certain things like resizing windows or moving things around, you literally do pinch the bottom of the window with your fingers and then move it like this. And that is very intuitive. I got used to that very quickly. Scrolling can be a little bit more difficult. You have to literally look exactly at what you want to scroll and then imagine that you're grabbing an invisible string and sort of pull it up and down to move the page up and down. Again, it's something that you get used to and once you figure it out, it's very easy to use, but there is a slight learning curve there. The biggest hurdle that I had to get over though was actually physically making sure that I looked at whatever I wanted to select, which sounds stupid. Like obviously you're gonna look at what you wanna select, but having to actually keep my eyes looking at the thing while I pinched, and sometimes the pinch didn't always register, was kind of a pain. And I learned while filming this review, my eyes wander all the time. If I'm on a web page or YouTube, for example, and wanna click on a specific video, even if I look at that video for a second and try and click, sometimes my eyes will already have moved on to the next video and I'll click on the wrong video specifically because I didn't focus on that one video, which for me was the most frustrating part. The eye tracking is excellent on this device, but that's the problem. It's so good that if you slightly move your eyes to somewhere else, you click on something else by accident and something you have to get used to. You have to really stare at something in order to select it. That being said, the eye tracking is still pretty incredible. You can look at very small selectable things surrounded by a bunch of other small selectable things and very easily and precisely select the item that you're trying to select. The only time that I personally really had trouble selecting specific things was when I was going to websites that aren't technically supported by the Apple Vision Pro like YouTube and trying to select between a couple of the controls that are all kind of bunched together on the YouTube window wasn't always the easiest. And personally, I don't really think it's the headset's fault. I've actually had trouble selecting certain things on my laptop on YouTube. I actually think that it's a problem with the UI of YouTube and the fact that it's not specific.
specifically optimized or that they haven't made an app for the Apple Vision Pro. Speaking of apps, the Apple Vision Pro has like four of them, which sucks. I'll be honest, I got bored of using this thing very quickly. Now, obviously that has to do with the fact that this is a brand new piece of tech in a completely new category. It's not like the latest iPhone that can use all of the previous iPhone apps. This device is completely new. Spatial computing is a completely new category for Apple. So while yes, you can use a decent amount of iPad apps, specifically designed apps for the Apple Vision Pro are few and far between. Now, there were a few that I used on a pretty regular basis. The first was Disney Plus. I was able to watch Star Wars in 3D, which was awesome. I'm a big Star Wars fan and watching it in 3D and actually decent 3D was incredible. Not only that, but being able to spread out the screen to cover my entire wall or just literally make it tiny and hold it in my hand was incredible. Plus, I could watch Star Wars on the moon if I wanted to because of the environments that Apple gives you, which I'll get more into later on in the video. But getting back into apps, as far as what you get on the headset, you do get the standard suite of Apple apps like Safari and iMessage and email and things like that. And all the Apple native apps worked well. There was no issues whatsoever. Photos was great. The camera app on this thing is pretty solid. There are a couple games available, which I really love that actually work in AR. You can put like a golf setup on your table or play Battleship with a computer on your table or on your bed or whatever you want to do. And those worked pretty well. But those are like half of the apps. There's a DJ app and there's an app that allows you to look at 3D objects in 3D, but that's pretty much it. Oh, I guess I forgot Encounter Dinosaurs, which is cool. You can encounter dinosaurs, but that lasts like 10 minutes and then you're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get a lot more into the things that I really like about this headset and the things that I don't like about this headset, but for me, the biggest drawback other than the price with the Apple Vision Pro is the lack of apps. The good news is though, if you're excited about this headset, that should change. Apple, of course, is gonna release more apps. A bunch more developers, now that this device is out, are gonna have a chance to develop for this device. There are so many more apps that are gonna come through the App Store in the very near future. I'm sure there will be a killer app at some point because right now when it comes to apps and especially games, this is like a $3,500 game of Battleship, which is not, not what I'd pay for that game. It's all right, but not 3,500 bucks. For me though, as a content creator, the main reason that I was excited about the Apple Vision Pro was actually the fact that you could edit your videos on this device. Now, not specifically on the device itself, which I'm sure you could in the future, but I could actually use the Apple Vision Pro as an external monitor for my laptop. And when it works, it works incredibly well. The resolution on this thing is amazing. So being able to read tiny text and make small adjustments in a video is super easy on this headset. And because of the nature of this device, you can make the screen size literally whatever you want. You can make it huge to cover your entire wall or the same size as your laptop screen. It doesn't matter. Of course, you can zoom in to see things close up. It's incredible. And it's actually really easy to use. All you need to do is open your Apple laptop and a little bubble pops up on top of the laptop that says connect. Once you've clicked that bubble, the laptop screen turns off and your monitor pops up in your field of view. Interestingly enough, any sound that you watch through your, I guess, external monitor doesn't come through the Apple headset itself. It comes instead through your laptop speakers, which can be good, can be bad. Obviously you can throw in AirPods and listen to your media that way, which is the way that I'd recommend when it comes to editing off your laptop or working off your laptop. But again, the resolution on this thing is amazing. I mean, as good as a $3,500 or even $5,000 monitor. That being said, unfortunately, you can only work off off of one laptop and one laptop screen at once. You can't have multiple windows up as separate screens on your Vision Pro from your laptop. You can obviously have different windows up on your Vision Pro and then your laptop screen, but you can't pull up multiple windows and separate them on the Vision Pro. Not only that, when it comes to controlling your laptop, you still have to use a mouse and a keyboard or your trackpad and your keyboard. You can't actually control the laptop itself from the Vision Pro. This is purely a monitor and a one monitor setup at that. However, I will say that it was really cool to be able to edit a video on my laptop screen, have my text messages up to the right side, have the news up to the left, have a YouTube video going on top of me. It was incredible. And that I think is the future of the Vision Pro, allowing you to connect with multiple devices, have them all up in front of you while you interact with the world around you. That being said, as much as I love this as a monitor for my laptop, if you're buying it strictly for that, probably not worth it. So I know we've already talked about interacting with the Vision Pro and also using some of the apps in the Vision Pro, but now let's talk about Vision OS, which is the operating system that runs this entire device. In a lot of ways, it's very similar to Watch OS, which you find on the Apple Watch. In fact, the two physical buttons that you have on the device are basically buttons taken directly from the Apple Watch. On one side of the headset, you've got the digital crown, which allows you to click and also spin. And on the other side, you've got a standard button. The most obvious difference though, between Vision OS and Watch OS is that when it comes to the Apple Vision Pro, you're viewing this OS through AR. So you're able to see the environment around you with the OS kind of floating in front of you. And Apple does an absolutely incredible job of making it look like the icons that are up on your screen or even the windows that are up are actually floating in your real world around you. When you're wearing the Apple Vision Pro, the windows actually create shadows on your actual floor around you. When you pull the thing closer to you, the shadows get bigger. It's as if the windows are actually in the real world in front of you. And that's the magic of the Vision Pro. That is the unique selling proposition of this headset. Not the apps, at least not yet, the system itself. And that's what the Vision Pro does 
better than any other VR headset. It makes you feel like you're interacting with the digital world in the real world. Now, obviously you're not, you're looking at screens that are showing an image of what the cameras are picking up, but the latency on these screens is so low, it literally looks like you're there in the moment. In fact, I was so interested in testing this out and seeing how low the latency was. I went to my barber shop and I had my barber cut my hair with the Apple Vision Pro. Yo, what's good, man? How you doing? Good, good, man. Yo, what's up? How you doing, man? My eyes, buddy. <laughs> so we're doing the first Vision Pro haircut, courtesy of Jen's Barber Lounge and the owner Joey. I want you to be as comfortable as possible. If it goes bad, it's, just take them off. This is fun. Don't be scared. I got you. <laughs> it looks good. No, I like it. I'm telling you, there's <laughs> nine screens up here. <laughs> and just only look at it and then click with your fingers, like pinch. <laughs> They're a little heavy. Looks great, man. You did a great job. What's your review? I didn't have any problems doing it. It puts a little strain on your eyes. It's more like virtual reality than it is real life. I would probably buy a pair for myself. For 3700 Not for 3700 The screens on this thing in front of your eyes have such a high refresh rate that when you move your hand, there's no delay, or at least it doesn't feel like there's a delay. So all these videos you see of people walking around with the Apple Vision Pro, it makes sense. It's not that hard to do. All that said though, the image that you're seeing isn't always the sharpest and it also doesn't deal with high light and low light that well. In low light situations, the screens get really grainy and then in high light situations, like if you're looking at a bright studio light or something like that, it kind of throws everything off a little bit. But if you mainly plan to use this device while you're sitting at your desk or sitting on your couch or something like that and you just want to do some spatial computing around you while you're staying in place, it's perfect. Another issue that I ran into when walking around in this device, which I would not recommend, is that the actual field of view is not that large. There there are actually other VR headsets out there with a larger field of view. So the one problem that I had when I was sort of walking around my house or walking around the street, as I'm embarrassed to say that I have done, but I did, is that there are literally blind spots on this device. Like here and here, almost like you're in a car. Everything outside of your little Vision Pro's goggle shape that you see when you're looking through the device, you can't see it all. And sometimes you bump into it, especially if it's like right here, right where the Vision Pro doesn't have a camera or a way to show what's going on on the screen. In fact, the field of view is one of the most disappointing parts of the Apple Vision Pro. It wasn't as large as I was hoping, especially for a device that's $3,500. Now, when it comes to day-to-day -day use, you don't always think about it. In fact, I forgot about it a lot, especially when I was watching movies in dark situations or even just doing standard computing. As long as I wasn't getting up and walking around, it wasn't that big of a deal. I know for the last couple minutes, I've been talking about the Vision Pro as an augmented reality device, where you've got an interface overlaid over top of the real world around you. However, if you don't want to use this device as an augmented reality device and want to get fully immersed in a virtual world, it does have the option to do that. Apple allows you to decide how immersed you want to get in a digital environment. And the way that you do that is by turning the digital crown. So if you want to do all your Apple Vision Pro computing with the backdrop being the real world, you leave the digital crown where it is. However, if you want to get away from the world around you, maybe you're traveling in on an airplane or maybe something in front of you is distracting you, all you do is you turn the digital crown and your vision will start to be enveloped by this insane digital world. You can either go fully into the digital world or slightly immerse yourself in the digital world so only the front of you has whatever it is that you want to look at behind your interface, but they do give you the option to do that. Now, while Apple does give you a decent amount of digital worlds to sort of immerse yourself into at the time of this launch, like being at the top of a volcano in Hawaii or being in a desert or even being in Yellowstone National Park or Yosemite, I don't remember which one it is. I think it's Yosemite, actually. Unfortunately, you can't set your own digital backdrops just yet. And I'm sure as time goes along, Apple will add a lot more digital environments and you'll probably be able to load in your own digital environments. But for right now, you've got like... I'd say around 10 different options. However, with each one of those options, you do have a day and night mode. So what I found myself doing was watching movies like Star Wars on the moon, which is one of the environments, at night, which is super cool. Cause I would look up and I'd see all these stars and I'd look in front of me and I'd see 3D Star Wars. It was crazy. So while there isn't a huge amount to do on the Apple Vision Pro currently, Apple has set a really great foundation for the Vision Pro that should allow developers to create some really cool stuff in really great environments. And actually going back to Star Wars, one of the ways that the Vision Pro absolutely excels is consuming content. Especially especially on apps like Disney Plus. This thing allows you to watch 3D movies in actual 3D, like Avatar, which you can't do on regular TVs unless you have a 3D TV, but even then it's not great. Not only that, you can watch the movie in a theater, you can watch it on the moon, you can watch it in your room, you can make the screen as big as you want, as small as you want. There are so many different ways to view content on this device. It's incredible. And again, because the screens that they use for your eyes are such high resolution, and because the frame rate is so low, it's like the best viewing experience that I've ever had for some of the movies that I watched on this thing. Seriously, the 3D effect on this headset is unbelievable. I felt like I could reach out and grab a lightsaber. I even tried. 
didn't work obviously, but I tried. I'm only half joking. And while I have yet to travel in the Apple Vision Pro, which may not be for a while because I'm not even sure I'm gonna keep this thing yet, I am excited about the possibility. The idea of sitting down on an airplane for eight hours and just having a headset that completely immerses myself in a digital environment. And yes, of course people will walk by and make fun of me because I'm wearing a $3,000 headset on my face, or they'll make fun of me because I'm wearing a headset in general. It really does allow you to have your own personal theater experience in any environment, which I think is really cool. Something else that's really cool about the Apple Vision Pro, which I've already sort of touched on a little bit, is the fact that you can film essentially 3D videos on this headset. Now, unfortunately on your screen currently, you can't see this 3D effect, but all of the videos that I filmed at the barbershop allow me to actually look around and sort of get different viewpoints of things as I'm wearing the headset. And I know that's one of the main features that Apple touted when they first launched this headset. And that's one of the things that they first show you when you put the headset on, but I'll be honest, although it's cool, it's not life-changing and it's not something that I'm really gonna be doing that often. Especially because when you take the videos off of the headset and put it onto your computer, they're squares and that sucks. It's just such a terrible size to edit for vertical video or horizontal video. It's like the worst of both. Really quick though, I should talk about the other screen that you have on the Apple Vision Pro. And that of course is the front display. Now Apple tried something very interesting with the front display and that's sort of a way to notify people in front of you whether you're looking at them or not. And the way it works is whenever you're using the AR pass-through and maybe you have a window up but you're still able to see the environment around you, you can actually see your eyes through the headset. And Apple actually used this really interesting screen technology that kind of makes it look like it's 3D. It's the same thing as like this little stickers that you had when you were a kid, you moved them side to side, you saw different images. It's almost the exact same technology in the screen. So when you look at this thing from different angles, you see different positions of people's heads. And in that way, it is very cool. However, the resolution of the screen sucks and the actual representation of your eyes on the screen looks horrifying. So it really is one of those, it's the thought that counts situations where, uh, you know, I like the idea, but I think the execution was awful. I will say though, it is pretty cool when you turn the digital crown and you immerse yourself in this environment, it actually changes from your eyes to a sort of ethereal, wavy environment that kind of looks like Siri. You know, whenever you talk to Siri on your phone or on your Apple HomePod or whatever, and it kind of gets this weird, like colorful, I don't know, waviness, that's what happens on the front of the headset. And the degree to which it happens depends on how much you can see through to the environment behind you, which I think is really cool. One thing that I figured out when I was trying to film B-roll for this review is that the only time that you see your eyes on the front of the display is when someone actually looks at you. So your eyes actually aren't just always on display, which is kind of nice, especially when they look the way that they do through this headset. But I do think it's cool that whenever you look at someone, it kind of pops up on the screen. I think it's a nice touch. I like the idea. Another kind of cool thing is that whenever you're screen recording on this device or using the cameras, it shows like this white wavy pattern going on the front screen to let people know that you are recording them, which I think is important. Obviously this device is not as discreet as something like the Meta Wayfair, so it's not as important as it is on those, but still, I guess it is a nice touch. Actually, a side note, whenever it picks up on someone looking at you, even if you're immersed in a digital environment, it sort of makes their face on your screen a little bit less covered up. It shows you almost a ghostly image of that person so you can still have a conversation with them while you're immersed on the moon or wherever it is that you are. Something else that I'd be remiss if I didn't cover is the actual weight of the device and the way that it feels on your face. First of all, this device is incredibly front heavy. So when you wear it for a long period of time, you feel it in your neck. I will say though that the padding that they use for the front of your face is pretty decent. It feels really good and that never really gets uncomfortable. I have found myself getting sweaty at times, but never super uncomfortable. But there are many periods where I've been using this thing for like an hour and a half and I'm like, I gotta stop. It's just too much much weight on my face. Now what I've done personally to sort of alleviate that pain is to use the other strap that Apple provides inside the case instead of this one. While this strap looks really cool and it's the one that you see everyone using, this one keeps the device on my head more securely and also distributes the weight a little bit better. It does, however, completely ruin your hair. So that's one of the reasons of wearing a hat in this review because I was wearing this thing for like an hour before I filmed this, my hair is destroyed. It just hit me how ironic this hat is. This is actually a hat from my sock brand Apothecary, which if you guys don't watch my secret channel, you probably don't know about, but this hat says pretty much broke and I spent $3,500 on an Apple headset that I'm gonna use for like an hour and then never use again. So I don't know, the irony is not lost on me. And actually, if you guys wanna grab this hat or really any of the other products that Apothecary makes, like our socks, we make the best socks ever, make sure to check out the links through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. Some other small gripes that I've had while wearing this headset is that the light seal is magnetic. And while it's great for switching out to get other light seals, it does pop off very easily. So if my head kind of moves down a little bit, it will pop off and you'll get a lot of light in the top. The other problem is, is that this nose area here, this sort of fabric that they use to kind of wrap around your nose to block out the light, doesn't do the greatest job in the world. So you are gonna get some light bleed underneath your nose, which unfortunately in turn will leave some reflections on the screens in front of your eyes, which can be a problem. Now to be fair, that's not something that's unique to the Vision Pro. It happens for a lot of VR headsets, but for a $3,500 headset, I would kind of hope that that would be something that could be fixed. And I'm sure it will be fixed whenever they release more light seal options for more people's face shapes. But for right now, it does have a decent amount of light bleed and it was kind of frustrating, at least for me. 
me. So the Apple Vision Pro really is an incredible piece of technology. What it does, it does very, very well. However, unfortunately, as of right now, there are not a lot of apps that run on this device. So you're paying $3,500 for a glorified set of goggles. Not only that, it's heavy. And because of that, it's not the most comfortable headset in the world. There are a lot of other VR headsets out there that are lighter, probably because they use plastic instead of metal on the headset itself. But the weight is also distributed better, which means you can wear them for longer periods without feeling this crazy strain on your neck. If you're buying this thing as purely an entertainment device though, this thing's incredible. While there's not really any games at the moment, actually watching content on this, especially 3D content, is mind blowing. So if I was someone who traveled and took long flights all the time, spending $3,500 on this thing might not be crazy because you use it so much. However, for someone like me, who's a casual user, who will use this to edit videos here and there, web browse every so often, and maybe watch a movie in 3D every so often, doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Plus, I'm married, so I don't usually watch movies by myself. And the fact that I can't watch 3D movies with my wife, I can only watch them by myself, kind of sucks. And that brings me to my main point, or I guess takeaway from using the Apple Vision Pro for the last week. This is a personal device. This is not something that's easy to share with other people. I've taken it to the barber shop, but even when I gave it to someone else to wear, it wasn't personalized to them. They had to reset it up as if they were a new user, which means it's actually pretty difficult to switch between users. So if you want to have one per household, that's not the best plan because maybe one person has one head shape and one person has another. Maybe one person's eyes are farther apart. Whatever the case may be, this device was specifically made to be used by one person and one person only. And not to get like too out there, but as much as I like the concept of this and I like the idea of maybe 30 years down the road having a pair of glasses like Ray-Bans that have the same sort of interface on the glasses themselves. Right now, this is incredibly dystopian. Like watching people walk around in this kind of scares me. Now I know I was one of those people, but I was purely just doing it for this review. It's not something I would ever do if I wasn't specifically reviewing this device. And even with Apple trying to make this thing seem more human because they add your eyes on the outside of the device, it actually makes it seem even more dystopian because it's even creepier. And don't get me started on FaceTime. You can FaceTime on this thing, which I have done. And Apple allows you to create this 3D persona so that when you're wearing it and FaceTiming, the people who are FaceTiming with you see a 3D representation of who you are, which looks awful, in my opinion. And sure, with the latest update, they have fixed it a little bit, so it's not as creepy as it was, but still, FaceTiming with a 3D version of a real person is not as good as actually FaceTiming with their face or just talking to them in real life. So as cool as this device is because of the way it allows you to really enjoy your entertainment, because of the build quality, because of how well Apple integrated all the different features, it's creepy. And sure, as tech gets smaller and gets put into smaller and smaller frames, it'll probably get less creepy because it'll start to look more like regular glasses. And I think that's what Apple is building. This is absolutely a first generation product that in five years, people are gonna be like, that thing sucked. But right now, this device really detaches you from the world around you. And I hate that. I really don't like it. But hey, maybe my thoughts on this thing will change as it gets smaller and less obtrusive on your face and less creepy, let's be honest. But for right now, no, I'm not gonna keep this thing. I'm definitely returning it. But I will say that Apple did a great job on a first generation device. I'm excited about the potential that it has, but for me, it's one thing to wear a VR headset when you're gaming, but when you're wearing a VR or AR or just any kind of headset all day, it's very Black Mirror-ish and I, I don't like it. <laughs> Would I keep it if it was only $500? Absolutely, but for $3,500, a device this weird, <laughs> I'm good. But hey, that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it. We are about to hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Also, let me know your thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro in the comment section down below. With all that being said, I will see you all in the next one.